as the actors and writers are on strike trying to get a fair deal for the work that they do, I thought it would be nice to focus a little bit more on the writing itself, particularly some of the themes I think that may be in this season of Only Murders in the Building, and how they could tell us who the killer could be. Family ties have always been a big theme with the show, and it's no surprise that they are in this season also. Mabel's issues with her father who died at a young age, Oliver and his son's uh, maternity testing, and of course Charles with his father who was not a good man. Even Theo, we saw son of his lost innocence. But the story within the show, Death Rattle, where I believe it was the mother who was choked with a death rattle and then thrown off the lighthouse. The writers had to come up with a story inside of the story. They had to come up at the very least with a premise for Death Rattle. And I love this kind of thing. It's sort of meta. So I wanted to talk specifically about Death Rattle itself and how some of those themes, particularly the lighthouse, could play into the story and how it could represent some of the struggles and things that the characters in the show are going through. These are all just ideas, so please take it with a grain of salt. First is the lighthouse itself. Framed in a remote and desolate location, I see it as a physical representation of emotional isolation, maybe solitude experienced by some of the characters. Ghost Ben spoke about feeling alone with his actor's friends because they had families and he did not. He felt a solitude even though they were all actors, but he did note that you should not compare yourselves to others. Mabel also appears to be grappling with feelings of isolation and loneliness. She's 29, she's about to be out of the building, and she doesn't know what to do with her life. We've all felt isolated and alone in our battles, but it's the support and understanding of others that lets the light shine through. The lighthouse's outward strength and sort of resilience could parallel the facade that some of the characters put up to conceal their secrets and vulnerabilities. Ben has a very hard exterior, but we have seen that his foundation is really weak. Having been fired from Brazos at the age of eight when he was supporting his family, that hung over him his whole life, causing him to be a jackass on every set that he walks on. The lighthouse's ordinary role in protecting sailors from danger could contrast with the murder happening at that very location. The victim's death by a child's toy could represent the vulnerability of human life and the unpredictability of others, leaving a sense of security shattered, forced to confront the realization that even those who are supposed to keep you safe can cause you harm. And that leans into the idea in the monologue that Loretta spoke at the beginning. The dangers of people you care for may be doing something to protect you, someone like a parental figure. This also leans into the idea of a rattle itself being originally something of about playfulness but then turned into an instrument of murder i think that the presence of a baby as the only person who witnessed anything or at least was there could also lead to the themes of parental responsibilities the lighthouse with its protective function becomes a representation of those abilities or responsibilities and the length someone could go to to safeguard the ones they love. Again, Loretta's beautiful monologue about what she would do to protect the ones in her care, but it also seems like she might possibly have some parental responsibilities that she let go of. 
be it the metaphorical, possibly metaphorical killing of Ben or attempted with a cookie with a death rattle on top. It's not confirmed, but I still believe that's very likely. And even him falling like the victim did in death rattle. Either way, it looks like he is mirroring the death in death rattle. Again, it could be someone attempting to shield the innocent and it kind of highlights the complexity of morals when trying to defend someone that we care about. Also, the baby rattle itself is a symbol of infancy and new life. Pair that with the death. It could be a symbol of like the cycle of life, you know, um, things that we cannot control the randomness of it all and things like Oliver's heart problems he's not young anymore you know he's it's not a spring chicken even though he has the energy he's afraid that he'll go out as a failure on Broadway and he doesn't want this to be his last hurrah everyone wants to feel like their life meant something I feel that the story of Death Rattle itself has lots of layers and symbolism, and even though I don't think all of this is relevant to the story, it's just something I thought uh, interestingly of, and I hope that you find it interesting also. I think it's more than a backdrop. I think it helps enrich the narrative and helps us see something what others cannot it helps us explore some of those deeper concepts while still engaging in the mystery itself and that's what this show does the murder is the core concept but it's the characters and their journeys and how they feel what really makes the show good well who would i say killed ben it's really hard Everything here really points to Loretta, but I think that's just too obvious. She mirrors many of the themes. Even her outfit mirrored the lighthouse in the play. But who else feels they have someone worth protecting? The only person that comes to mind for me was Donna, the producer. She feels like she needs to protect her son. It's his first show as a solo producer. I understand that she would likely go to lengths to protect her son. Guys, as I was writing this, um, I think I might have uh, came across a clue that might help identify who the killer is. It was already my number one theory, but I think this puts the nail in the coffin for me last season the killer's name that we knew her as for a majority of the season was poppy white could be a reference to a very famous murder case the black dahlia opposite colors and then different flowers while i was thinking about the themes and could the producers have committed this crime I realized that the son's name is Cliff. Cliff, you know, a steep rock face, like something you would find at a lighthouse. Okay, okay, I bet plenty of people have mentioned that before. Cliff, you can fall down a cliff, fall off the lighthouse, fall down. But did you know what Donna and Cliff's last name is? It appears on the poster for Death Rattle. Their last name is Demio, which is Latin for descend or go down. His name is Cliff Descend. Sounds like a fall off cliff to me, but I don't know. I might just be pulling at straws, but I think that was very purposefully done. Um, You only see his name on the poster for a second. Do you think that could be something? As much as the parental figures uh, protecting their kids, 
I feel like Donna would be the one that fits this idea the most, but Cliff's name literally mirroring what happens in the play in in some ways to Ben kind of makes me feel like it was him or both of them are in it together. And of course, there is this whole thing about Oliver owing Donna money. I mentioned a couple months ago in the episode titles video that I believe was episode seven is called Cobro. Now, I did not know at that time that uh, Ben would play a character called Cobro, uh, bro who is a Cobra. But I think that was a very sly way to add in Cobro in multiple ways because I mentioned in the video that Cobro means a debt that must be paid to collect a debt and I think that this is what Donna is doing this play she chose a director who owes her money who is a wash I love Oliver but no one likes him at least he's not good for the theater they chose Ben Glenroy to play the main role He's never acted on stage before. He said so himself. They're very quick to tear down the sets. They, they, they're trying to get rid of everything. And I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was, but I believe it was Jenny. Um, Jenny, who in my comments mentioned that in the producers, of course, with Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick, they state that you can make more money with a flop than a hit and this chestnut of a play was never going to make any money at least if it wasn't a musical maybe the musical makes some money I'm not sure but I like that idea that Donna just set this thing up to fail from the beginning horrible director an actor who's never been on the stage and the Loretta, who's never gotten her big break before, even though Oliver saw something great in her, and we all know she can act. It is very interesting that this thing was literally set up to fail. I don't think that that means that the first death with the poisoning where he fell on stage or attempted death, I don't think that was necessarily a scam per se i don't think that was done to drum up more people when he came back i think it was a literal death attempt maybe in a way donna used this to get back and recuperate some of the money she lost from oliver in a previous play i'm assuming and maybe ben did something to them in the past who knows either way cobro wound up being a debt that was forced to be paid Who knows, maybe if we see the story death rattle unfold, it will help us unfold some of the mysteries of the characters and what's going on in the story of the show itself. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it's a little bit different. I think um, after we get a couple more episodes in, probably around episode five or so, I'll attempt to go over the themes again, maybe with the Cobra and the lighthouse i had an idea for it before but things change and maybe in some ways it's still correct we'll see but thank you guys for watching screen favorites my name is dallas hit that like button or subscribe if you want i don't care but i'll catch you on the rooftop